something I forgot to mention about this game is how beautiful, well I already mentioned it, how beautiful the music is. And it, it's pretty obvious already. The art style is absolutely fantastic in this game. Let's get on into instructions though. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Robot Panda 15 uh, Those of you guys in the cab know me as Geki. And uh, we got another Valkyria Chronicles 4 episode for you here. And uh, last we left off, we engaged in our first battle, which is a very light tutorial. Dealt with one enemy tank and a uh, few infantrymen. And then uh, we discussed plans for Operation Northern Cross, which uh, we're good about to get into here with the Chapter 1, the Battle of Fort Crest. So, let's hop to it. March the 10th. At long last, we have finally entered Imperial territory. The ferocity of the Federation counterattack caught the Empire off guard. Battle by battle, town by town, we're pushing back the front, with no signs of slowing down. The road to Schwarzgrad is a long one, running at least 1,500 kilometers from friendly territory into the heart of the Empire. But at the end of it lies our target, the capital city. We have a long trek ahead of us, but for now, morale is high. Everyone here believes in this operation. Everyone is praying it'll succeed. <laughs> I guess the Empire's not so tough after all, huh, Commander? Give them one good stomping, and all of a sudden they're running off home. Huh? So are you gonna take a picture of everything we pass? Here, let me have a look at it. Uh, hey, Raz, come on! <laughs> Stop it! Really? You're wasting my film! Wasting? No chance! What you got here is a picture of a future hero! Ugh. You take one too, eh, Kai? Yeah, maybe. Uh -huh. There you go. That's a keeper. Uh, damn it, Miles! The hell was that for? Freaking her, Quiet. man! I told him to stop the tank. Huh? Everything okay? The wind shifted. They brought out the big guns. A blast that big could wipe out a whole squad. Easy. Let's keep moving. A rendezvous point with Squad F should be nearby. <gasps> Flash. Thunder. That's the password. Next time? Give us the response before you scare us shitless. Apologies. I didn't mean to frighten you. Follow me. Lieutenant Victor is waiting. Who? Oh, you mean Minerva. And you are... Corporal Crystal Ward, from Squad F. Indeed. I have the honor of answering to Minerva Victor, the strongest and smartest officer in the army. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> I assume you saw that explosion. Oh, we saw it all right. They must be packing serious heat. A 21 centimeter howitzer. Currently, our worst nightmare. It must have a range of at least 10 kilometers. We can't advance with that thing around. That's a 210 millimeter round. <laughs> That's a bit wild. Just so. Our mission is to capture that cannon. Where is her squad? Commander! She commands a squad, yet, like, we never see her actually with her squad, it seems. Good work leading I don't squad like her. So far, I, 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 I've decided I don't pace, like her. However, does leave something to be desired. We saw cannon fire, so we've been proceeding with caution. 
Keep your excuses. As I said before, the success of Operation Northern Cross hinges on our swift advance. Time is of the essence. Bit reckless. I know. You try hustling with a huge cannon up your ass. Oh, wait. You already tried and failed. Down, boy. Claude, have you not housebroken your squad? The hell did you say? I'd appreciate it if you didn't insult my soldiers. They're people, not pets. I like this about Claude. He's a very people person, it seems. He very he cares very much about the equality within his squad, which is actually really interesting for of a characteristic, especially in military I branch. Them to act like it. I'm not the one wagging my tongue. Soldiers who step out of line are often the first to die. Remember that, Sergeant Raz. Yeah, yeah. Hope you make it out alive too, Lieutenant. <sighs> um, Commander? Uh, there's a good view from the clearing. Maybe we could brief them there. Claude, come with me. I, I don't like her, and it's not like a, a bad I don't like her. It's like, I think you're not supposed to like her. You're obviously not supposed to like her at the beginning. She'll probably open up later on down the road. But there's just something about her that, Alex, that I think it's Alexis Tipton, his voice actors, that Alexis Tipton just does that really kind of makes you, like, ugh about her. Allow me to explain. Oops, too far. As you know, Fort Crest has a 21 centimeter howitzer that's blocking our advance. I'm trying to imagine a 210 millimeter gun <laughs> like that. It might just look like an old castle turned into a makeshift fort. I think. No, I. Naval guns are. T no, are they? No, naval guns, I think, only are really like 17 centimeters maximum or something like that. Or 17 inch, whatever it's called. They've stationed quite a few troops to defend the camp. I'll have to take a look at it. If we get too close, those turrets on the walls will mow us down. So when does our own cannon get here? That howitzer already destroyed it. We were outranged. Blown up already? How long will the replacement take? The bridge was destroyed too, so the artillery tractor can't proceed. It will take at least seven days. Though we do have plenty of infantry en route. Doesn't matter how many foot soldiers we get. Without a cannon, we're just waiting around. Not necessarily. Huh? Time is of the essence. We don't have a week to wait. You're as sharp as ever. Like he says, we can't afford to wait. We'll have to capture the fort without artillery. That's too reckless. Those turrets would fill us with more holes than golly and cheese. It's a dangerous mission, I know. But those are your orders. This isn't your local militia. This is what you signed up for when you joined the Edinburgh Army. Ooh. So for those of you that are unaware, in, Val in the first Valkyria Chronicles game, you actually play as a local militia for the first few chapters until you escape. And uh, the Empire is invading your homeland. So yeah, that's a little bit of a Easter egg caveat there. You're right. We enlisted to crush the Empire. Not to commit suicide. Then allow me to clue you in on something. Crystal, tell them the news. Yes, ma'am. This morning, the Empire invaded Galia. They've invaded? I knew it was only a matter of time. What about our hometown? Is Hoffman okay? All we know is that the battle broke out near the border, at Citadel Girlandio. The Imperial Army, however, is being led by Prince Maximilian himself. Galia's prospects look great. Oh, damn it! Is there nothing we can do? So as you can tell, this story takes place kind of along the same storyline as the original Valkyria Chronicles game, for those of you guys that have played it. So you'll see a few crossovers here and there between the two, I'm, I'm guessing. But uh, we'll, we'll, 
I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. It definitely means we might get some more. Like, I mean, there's already DLC that has that has it where you play as Squad Seven, and you have Edie's advanced ops too, which I'll also be recording if once Operation I complete Northern once I beat this game. As planned, the Empire won't have the luxury of staying on the offensive. Our only option is to complete the mission as soon as possible. Guess we've got no choice then. If our home's in the Empire's sights, then we've got to protect it! Yeah, let's do it for Galia! Alright, cool, and we got our combat episode. So, here we go. Whew. No artillery support, we're just going in with a tank and some footmen. Here we go. Here are your orders. <clears throat> do I have to do this voice or will she do it? I have to do the voice. Alright, so we're here to seize Fort Crest Howitzer. Squad E will lay siege to the castle and capture the enemy camp. Turrets are guarding the entrance, however. If you wander into the machine guns' range, they'll cut through you like carving a cake. Concentrate on getting a foothold instead. The plaza out front will do... But first, you'll need to get into place. Position units on the battlefield to do so. So here's kind of the bread and butter of the preparation phases of Valkyria and how the games kind of work. So we're going to go into the... De oh, we're not going to go into the deploy menu. Uh, we're going to go into our squad menu here. Let's see, who do we got? So we have Millennia, Florette, and Ferrier in reserve. Our actives, we have Curtis. And here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about potentials. So potentials uh, don't necessarily mean a good thing. Obviously, everyone's like, oh, he has potential, blah, 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 meaning a good thing. However, potential in this game means this, th these are things that these characters have a potential to do. So for instance, uh, Curtis's social anxiety potential. Uh, he gets tense around people when they're not well, when he's not well acquainted with. So if it's somebody he that's not part of his likes group, uh, his defense will decrease. It has a potential to decrease his defense. He's also a nature leveler, so whenever he's around nature or in grasslands, etc., it's going to bring about it's going to bring a boost to his defense, essentially canceling out his social anxiety. He also has the true friend uh, potential, meaning that when Lawrence nearby, he has a potential to boost his attack power. And on top of that, when he's nearby Lawrence. A Laurent will also have a chance to fire whenever he's firing in his action phase. Uh, so we're not going to get like too in depth with all of these guys. If we see one that kind of makes that kind of makes us question it, we'll definitely go for it. But here's what I'm basically looking for. We're looking for uh, what I like to do when I set up my squad is I want at least three scouts that are all going to work very well with each other, as well as possibly having some really good work with a couple of our shock troops because those two classes are going to work very hand in hand with each other the scouts obviously can move up together as a team and uh, use their suppress use their fire together on target while the shock troops can move on flanks with the, with a scout with them and you know use that uh, extra sight quote unquote that the scout has to their advantage so I like this combo here of Jester, Millennia, Teresa. So we have Jester, Millennia's over here, and Millennia also likes Brittany. So what I'm gonna do real quick is, since Godwin's a lone wolf, he's, but he's a lone wolf, but he's also a scout, so that's good to have. I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna dump huh. Curtis. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna scroll through my list here. I got Roz and Zyga who are gonna work well together. Um, Scott, I don't want shock troopers that don't work well together, so he can go in the back. Uh, Emmy can go in the back. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Now she can go in the back too. She doesn't have good symmetry. She doesn't have any symmetry with any or any. What's the term I'm looking for? Chemistry with anybody. So Laurent, here's Laurent here. He has perks with Aladdin and Curtis. Curtis is in reserve, so he can go sure out. You don't need me. Uh, Kegel likes Jimmy. Jimmy likes Kegel. That's a good anti-tank duo. These are our lancers. This is our main anti-tank troop. Uh, 
we'll go over them a little bit more in game when we get to see them in action. There's Jean. Jean likes Viola and Ferrier. I have Ferrier in reserve, so she can go. You There's Brittany. It. Brittany likes Millennia. Oh, let me put Millennia on the team. Of course. So that gives us a really good link uh, into our scouts through there. I don't have any shock troopers is the main issue I'm having, though. Uh, the only one I'd have is Ferrier, who likes Jean, who's another Lancer. So I don't have any shock troops that like my scouts yet, which is a bit of an issue. But Brittany likes uh, Millennia. Millennia likes uh, Teresa. And then Teresa likes Jester and Millennia. And then Jester likes Teresa. So you have f four units there that all work very well together, which is really nice to have. Uh, we also have Allard and Rebecca, our two engineers. Engineers, you want to stick next to your tanks, or you can have them stick next to your infantry. They have the same movement range as sappers, or as the uh, scouts, I believe. And they have the potential to uh, build sandbags, which is really nice. But mostly you use them to refill your lancers and your tanks and etc. as you go. And last but not least, we got our snipers. So I have a lad in here who's friends with Nige and Laurent. There's Nige. Uh, snipers are the only thing I really like working separately and alone because they obviously they don't have very good AP, so they're not going to be moving with the frontline troops very often. They're going to be more behind the lines, so they're not going to have the as often of supports as you'd like. But Kai is Kai, so we'll keep her on the team. Uh, Nage and unfortunate. Yeah, they can go over there. I'm not going to utilize them. And now we have a pool we can work with here. So, um, I'm definitely short on shocks. I have three shocks. I have a whole lot of scouts. Rosetta. There's Rosetta. So those two can operate as a team together. Godwin's is my solo scout. And then I got Jester, Teresa, Millennia, and Brittany. That'll kind of work as my main force. And then Allard, Rebecca. And then, of course, I got Kai, Roz, Zyga. That'll be my th triple combo right there. Um, he is a Darkson, so he has that whenever he's got other Darksons nearby. Uh, okay, cool. So, yeah, keep him next to Roz. I got a two man scout or two man shock troop team here, as well as Viola. So, let me throw Gene in there as well, just okay. so I have that. There we go. That's all our groupings. God. Equipment. Um, I think I'm going to throw... Jester's probably going to be my most used scout, I bet. Uh, nope, I can't do it in there. And tank parts. What do I got? Nothing I can change here. Oh, maybe I do. Uh, nope. And nope. Okay. Cool. So, talk through the squad. Got a really good squad listing going here. Let's position our units. We only have six units we can place with one already permanently in the field being the Hoffen. Sometimes you'll have more than one unit that has to that is forced to be on the field, which is unfortunate, but you do what you gotta do. So only certain units can be placed in certain things. And a CP symbol uh, of students, basically these are leader units. Um, you add one CP to your total which basically allows you to control more units per turn. There is an enemy tank on the field. So, I think we're going to roll with... I definitely want Roz, Zyga, and... Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. Let's do Roz, Lock Zyga, here I go. and Kai in the middle here. I've got definitely want an engineer for our tank. We'll get the guy with the tank Frank perk because right. that'll help Here him out go. a lot. Um, I'm kind of debating do I want a Lancer or do I want my Lone Scout? I'm going to go with my Lone Scout Godwin. I'll do I only I have want. six slots to work with. That's kind of the basic setup. So, as you saw, all that chemistry that I was just talking about earlier, we're not even using any of the units there. Uh, we're mostly just using kind of our base group of people, but that's all we've got to work with. So, yeah, we, that's what we're working with. Let's get to it then. Here we go. Now, capture that this mission is really interesting. It uh, 
something they definitely did in this game is they made the missions feel a lot longer because you have cutscenes in the middle of it. You ready? Take down the Imperial camp. <laughs> Capture their heavy artillery. Squaddy, move out. All right. I expected resistance, but they're tough nuts to crack. What should we do? We can't exactly rush in and kick the door down. We'll get routed if we don't have a plan. First, we need a solid foothold. Let's capture that camp. After that, well, guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Weapons free. Squad E, move out. All right, here we go. So we got a pretty decent formation set up. Um... Pay attention, Claude. Oh my that gosh. Means getting the most out of your soldiers. Don't forget the Yeah, good. So, camps are basically outposts, etc. Uh, when you're near it, you'll receive a bonus to your defense and HP, recovery at the start of each turn, and occupying it allows you to call for reinforcements or have units retreat. You can't go past, I think it's eight units, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and enemy can, enemies can capture camps from you if you don't have any friendlies in it, so if you leave enemies behind and capture a camp and then keep moving, they have the potential to come back and capture the camp right out from under you, which then they can spawn reinforcements from, and it's just, it's no bueno from there. So, obviously, we have a tank to deal with up here. What kind of tank is it? It's a light tank? That should be, ooh, there's two tanks. So two tanks, they're both light tanks. Eh, they're separated enough, we won't... Depending on how tall this cover is here, um, we won't have to deal with both of them at the same time. We can kind of pillar this guy over here. So let's do that. Advancing. There they are. I'm gonna try to track him real quick. I see. Fire. Beautiful hit. Beautiful. Your firepower. Uh, and actually, I said I was gonna pillar. Oh my gosh. So they're gonna talk about field actions. Basically, tall, when you go prone in tall grass, you get to hide from enemies, meaning they won't shoot at you until you stand. Uh, you can also climb ladders to reach higher ground, etc. Uh, and they can only be taken when the prompt for X appears, or your uh, prompt for actions appears on the screen. So what I'll do, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna position the Hoffman if I can get through here, kind of right in front here, so he can take all the brunt of the attacks. And I think I'm gonna spend. Uh, I don't have any lancers. If I had a lancer, I could get around like that and do that, but I don't. It's important to note that lancers don't have AOE, so their rockets won't do any damage directly, like you'd think they would. I see. There we go. And we got one more hit we're gonna do, and then we're gonna move the rest of our troops in. So I got what? I got five over there. I got one, two, three, four command points I can spend. Okay. So I'll save Moving my out. four command points for my next turn, and then we'll just kind of bum rush we all of them like that. Through. Flood through. I can't really do much with that second tank just sitting there. Tanks are very, very vital, or very, very lethal to well other done. infantry. So we'll come across here. Whoops! If we can't advance, the whole operation suck. I'm about to get shafted by that tank over there. I should have stayed in cover. Uh, so let's see here. Now nah, we're just gonna hold here for now. So you'll see a bunch of different markers that are popping up on the screen there. It's uh, on my tank unit. Basically, it means he has low AP and he has low ammunition because I've used him for two turns. There we go. And he walked directly in front of my coaxial gun and got absolutely shrecked. So the command post is... The, the flag with the star is the objective that we want to go to, uh, but I do want to capture the other command post as well. I don't want enemy units spawning behind me when I do this, obviously. All right. Alright, so when a unit's HP falls to zero, they're in critical condition. Uh, 
obviously you want to make sure your units are out of danger. This is uh, uh, every Valkyria Chronicles game is Iron Man mode. If the um, uh, what am I thinking of? If the enemy walks on top of your friendly unit and they quote unquote take captive of them, that unit is dead and you will not be able to use it. Or if three turns pass before you can get to that critically wounded unit, that unit is dead and they are removed from all your rosters completely. Okay. Which Moving is out. quite an eye opener if you think about it. So yeah, this fun fancy art style. What is Enemy going sighted. on here? Oh my gosh. A tutorial every five seconds. So sight lines basically are what your unit can see and what can see you. That's that's it. So all these little lines you see coming out are what I can see. Alright, so we'll get set up here, we'll do a couple shots. Fire! Oh, we're out of ammo now. Okay. We're gonna need my engineer to come up and uh, help us out here. I swear, there needs to be a way where you can just skip these tutorials. Uh, engineers have a lot better, uh, a much more potent ragnade, which is basically uh, your potion, quote unquote, to heal people. Infantry have their own. They, it is a small little one where they can heal themselves, and if they're close enough to an ally, the ally next to them. Uh, however, the engineers have a much bigger one, so they, that's why they are very useful in that regard. So let's get Allard up on station here so he can help out the Hoffen. Um, basically, whenever you pass by a friendly unit, you give them ammo. You'll see it happen here. Tanks are so awesome! I'll rip you apart! Alright, he's all set up now. We'll get him on this line to watch the flank, basically. That should be good. Alright, cool. Okay. Hoffman's back in action. We got three rounds that we can shoot here. And voila. Man, we're getting that wind talk a lot here. Right there! Better not screw this one up, Claude. Perfect. One more attack and we should be good. Okay, moving out. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this opportunity to kind of move into position a little bit more. So I can lock right down there. this lane with the tank, and then my infantry can advance on the right side of the tank there. No! So I've essentially shut down the majority of this area here. Now, if a Lancer pops up out of nowhere, we might be in a bit of trouble. So we got to keep that in mind. So Godwin is going to advance on his own here. I'll have him go on the right side and basically do a little bit of bounding here with these two guys, these two fellas. Keep calm and move onward. Let's see. Four to hit, five shots in total. Let's go for it. I like that. Only one round hit, and it hit him in the chest. Incoming. Watch out for. All right. He's going to chill out here. Let's get Kai moving. Moving out. Raz, don't be stupid. All right, cool. Because she's standing next to Raz. She got her Fool's Protector potential. And these potentials are activating really quickly. I was not expecting that. If we can't advance, the whole operation suck. However, we didn't. We couldn't make use out of it because, again, really low AP on these now guys. Advancing. Snipers have some of the lowest AP you will ever see. So, do I want to go for him, or do I want to go for him? So, obviously, you see this guy's in cover. That means he's no longer going to take critical damage, and he's a bit too far away for two shots to kill. So, we got to keep that in mind as well. Uh, we'll just go for this guy, then, because he's technically flanking our scout. Ping. Oh, or, or you're going to miss. Okay. RNG is delightful. We'll come back to her in a second Here once we get Roz me. and Zyga up. <laughs> cool, cool. Enemy approaching. Hey, yes. All right, Check get Zyga moving. And let's see. So I, I am going to try my best to avoid those machine guns as much as possible. Uh, spoiler, we are going to get another unit we later really on in the later on in this chapter or in this uh, yeah, this episode or chapter, I guess. So 
Uh, keep that in mind. Here I'm just going to use pain. my turns here to kind of move Roz and Zyga up a bit further. <laughs> really? Okay. Come on. All right, we're going to hold our guys here. They're going to kind of establish this line. Um, Check this out. Hopefully this guy doesn't get through. If he gets through, I'm going to be very upset -y. Let's go. A lot of... Almost that entire mag was, was headshots there. That's insane. So these guys are all set up in position facing that guy. So if he even moves within our effective range, he's probably going to get shredded by my shock troops. And then I got my scout and engineer kind of watching the right side there. So that area is covered as well as my tank holding. He can hold pretty much the entire left side there as well. So they're talking about uh, deployments and reinforcements, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Yeah, like I said, he's he's done. <laughs> he's got all my dudes shooting at him. Oh, and even my scout turned to face him, which is kind of no bueno there. I need you to kill this guy, Godwin. Or not. Cool, cool. We'll, we'll kill him next turn. We'll, we'll close the distance and get in there. That or I'll bring my scouts up, and or I'll bring my shock troops. Actually, that's a much better option. We're gonna bring the shock troops up. Hey, yes, check this out. Don't stop! You've got to break through. Cool. And let's see if I can get into that sandbag right there. I should have expected as much from you. Actually, let's get greedy. Let's move up a bit closer and engage from the tall grass. Oh my God. Yes, sandbags, uh, you have grenades. Grenades destroy sandbags and other pieces of cover. They're an AoE weapon. And crawl. Keeps the enemy's blind spot. Cool, so he's in position here. And then I'm gonna get Roz in position right next to him. I got this. I'm gonna move my scout up on the northern side up here on my left. All right, so this guy's literally right here. I'm gonna use that grenade tactic that they were just talking about, and we're gonna plop it right onto his face. Wide open. So boom, there you go, and you see the sandbags are destroyed. Uh, I could bring my engineer up here in a second to repair those sandbags. Uh, however, I'm gonna get a little bit more greedy here, and I'm gonna capture this camp Check right this in front out. of them. Uh, I'm out of alignment from that turret, so I don't have much to worry about from there, luckily. Oh, so boom, yeah. we have the camp captured. I'm gonna return him back to the grass. And basically if I hit X, he can uh, retreat back into camp. You can also use your command stuff to uh, evacuate them. Uh, either way, it's going to cost you a CP point to evacuate your troops. And it's going to cost you another one to deploy to, to send in a reinforcement here. So he is going to gain a buff from it. Uh, he, it's called a morale boost, basically. When you take down an enemy or capture a camp, you get a morale boost. Anything, any of that could be a morale boost for anything. So uh, let's see. Let's bring up. Let's bring up Rebecca. So Rebecca will pop up over here soon, meaning I can now use the Hoffen. I almost called the Edelweiss there. Okay. And kind of push up through here. If I can, let's see if it lets me. Keep calm and move onward. Nope, can't get through those ones. Okay. What I will do then is I'll hold here, and we'll use the mortar. The mortar is a very, very effective HE weapon. It does the same thing the grenades do, so these sandbags will be bye-bye. Obviously it has more of a blast radius than the grenades do as well, so keep that in mind. All right, uh, I'm gonna take two turns to move my scout, because I know my engineer and my, uh, or I'm gonna move my sniper. I know my engineer and my, um, what you wanna call it, can both, um, move, cover a lot of ground very quickly on their turns, so I'm going to take both these turns from the scout. 
which you're not behind solid cover, so I can do these shenanigans and probably miss your face. Let's see. There we go. Good work, Kai. Redemption for that last hit. And it was a leader unit, so that's one less CP that they got. And that works the same for your guys, your oh, no, units as well. If your units are eliminated, that are leader units like Kai is here, uh, you lose a CP, you lose one CP because of that. All right, cool. That was a good. T that was a good turn. We're on turn three here, making good progress. Uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll bring our line forward. Uh, I'm gonna bring the scout, my scout forward. So Godwin, you're gonna move up. He's kind of been in the same position the entire time. We're gonna capture this camp and call it a day, hopefully. Make haste. Not a moment to lose. Keep calm and Ooh. move onward. He wanted to. So boom, there we go. There's the camp captured. Three turns. That's all it took. A little bit of thinking involved in that one, but uh, pretty well, well basic, easy Even to do. Can't advance like this. But we're not done yet. This is bad, Claude. If this keeps up, they'll mow us down. Come on, let's just go all out and charge him. Better than sitting here and dying, right? No, a frontal assault is way too dangerous. You have to stand back. Easy for you to say. Damn, if only we had artillery. There has to be some way through. Just hang on until I find it. So our objective now changes. We now um, have to reach that target area. And as you can see from the map here, our only way to get up there is without tank support. So we're gonna lose tank support along this bridge here. We got, it looks like a couple shock troops and a scout and there's three machine gun positions, probably four. I guarantee you there's probably a position over here as well. Ugh, that's going to be pretty brutal. Alright, let's do it. Um, hmm. Um, we're going to... I'm going to bring up another sniper real quick. So ten. Ten units is the max you can deploy. Uh, depending on the mission, you may be able to deploy that all at once from the start of the mission, or you can only deploy X amount of units at the start, and then you have to use your CP to call in more units. Generally, you don't really want to... Oh, I don't have any other snipers, that's right. Generally, you don't really want to call in more units like that. You just want to kind of use what you got. Um, I found that that typically works very well. Here comes the pain. Obviously, you want to S-rank these missions as often as possible, as much as possible, so... Or A-rank these missions, I guess, is the better term. We're on as often way. as possible. Oh, boy. Okay. We'll move Roz up there. He's on the wrong side of the barrier. I'm going to get him over on the, the other side and end the turn as quickly as possible. I'm invincible. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's, he's in for a world of hurt here. Enemies everywhere. Cinderella. Wait, Cinder what now? This sure as hell ain't a fairy tale! I'd love to get to the ball at the castle, but I don't even have a pumpkin, let alone a carriage. And we're gonna introduce Seriously? probably one of, the, one of Claude? my favorite characters from what I played in the demo. She grew on me very quickly. <laughs> well, I'm no godmother, but I can work some magic for you. Magic, huh? could use a little, if it was real. And here we have it, Riley. Leave it to me. Ah, my 11 Charlie heart. So we now have indirect fire assets in a Valkyrie Chronicle game. These guys are called Grenadiers. I'm going to call them Bordermen, uh, or 11 Charlies, because that's what we do, what we love. Uh, it does take time to get them set up, obviously. It's a freaking mortar, so you gotta keep that in mind. Alright. 
but we can basically engage anything that our allies can see, which is good. So we're gonna hit this asshole up here, and we're gonna one-shot him. Uh, it's a learning experience. Yeah, these are quote-unquote experimental weapons, Ugh, so you do have to deal with this every now and then. Uh, I'm gonna cheese this a little bit, and we're gonna spend two turns on her. Oh man. All right, one more round. That should kill this guy. Come on. Boom. There, it's the right side flank taken care of. Uh, I see. They're good. We'll put away the mortar now. And we'll move on over to the left side here to engage it. Now, charge! Ooh, yeah. These gun positions are nasty. Uh, we're going to take all our time in the world that we need to take to eliminate these <laughs> machine gun positions because these are uh, quite, yes, yes, they are quite difficult. Cool, so we're going to do one more turn on Riley and then I'm going to move up what I can. One more turn there, and it looks like I'm going to be able to move uh, Zyga up with Roz, so I'll have both my shock troops up on the front line. Take this. Boom! There we go. That Gatling turret is now eliminated. I, I, if I could just sit here all day and do that, do that, I'd uh, I'd love it. Now, obviously, we don't have much AP, so I am going to move her forward just a tad. She should be able to engage that uh, gun position on the left. Uh, the I can do Hoffen, this. I must call it the Edelweiss again. Show them all. The Hoffen is going to be of no use to us in its current position. Oh my god. Is top dog. I might have to turn that off just because it gets kind of in the way of the whole away. thinking process. So we are going to use our Ragnate here and kind of demonstrate what it does when you use it on a friendly like this. So we'll left deep pad just a little bit there, that way so I can kind of specify that it's going to go on Roz. Thanks. Boom! That gave Your him 100 health in. there, which is very, very nice to have, especially with how risky I uh, did that. Uh, who's this guy? Looks like we got more scouts on the left and right sides here. I get this bridge on lock. Basically, I'm just going to mortar the shit out of their side of the bridge. And you can see Riley Miller will also engage, or your mortarman will also engage to slow down enemy units like that. So here comes another one. This one's a shock trooper. Oh, he's just going to stand there. Okay. All right, let's think about it here. Uh, we're gonna let's bound up with Godwin. Don't talk down to me. I'm not here to make friends. Oh, hush, Godwin. Uh, I expect the very best out of all of you. Woo! We're gonna hold him here. Okay. We're gonna hold him here in case anybody comes around this corner. He can light him up. Better not. Next up, we're going to go to Riley, and Riley is going to move forward a tad, and we'll eliminate that uh, machine gun position. Can't use grenades with them this close. All right. Take a look at the camera angle. There we go. That should do it. He, he is on a he is on a machine gun turret, so he has more health than what he actually should have, unfortunately. So we got to go another turn. Leave it to me. All right. He there we go. That's that. All uh, machine gun positions eliminated, and now we can push up our shock troops. One more for me. 
she'll chill out here. Uh, before I move my shock troops, I'm gonna bring my en one of my engineers up here. Where do we got her? Where's she at? Rebecca. There we awesome. go. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Watch for fire. Uh, Roz has plenty of health now, so I'm not too worried about him. Can't use grenades with them. All right, let's see about engaging these guys down the lane. Thirty-one shots to kill, eh? Ten shots on this guy. Won't hurt a bit. No headshots, but eh, we got him. We put some rounds into him, weakened him up. I'm gonna bound up my uh, shock troops now. Here comes the pain! Do, 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 do. Come on, go over. <laughs> Keep the enemy's attention on you. Watch <laughs> out! They're on to you! Let's see, can I make it over the next one? I think I can. Stay low. Stick to the cool areas. Alright. Grenade! Let's see how they like these mortars. Eat lead. Uh, let's not give them the opportunity to use the cover, and I think I killed the scout. Yeah, I did. So the shock troops, all that remains there. Target destroyed. Very good. All right, Roz, you're not going to be able to do anything from that position. I want you to watch. I want him to watch this Ladies left side here. Gentlemen. That way, so uh, if anybody any shenanigans happen that way, he can handle it. And now we'll push up Zyga, and then I'm going to push out. up Godwin. Riley's in a good position where she's at. Oh, there's another machine gun position up there. That's a bit brutal. Alright, we'll aim for the head, see what we get. There we go. He's done. I I did it! There we go. Perfect. So these two are set up in a very nice position up there. Uh, now I'm debating it. Do I move? I'm going to move Riley. She doesn't have very much movement speed left, but uh, hey ho, what are you going to do, eh? Let's, let's see if we can engage this enemy mortar position from here. I cannot. I can, however, engage this enemy position over here. Uh, I can get rid of those sandbags in front of them and deal the explosive damage I would need to do. So now they have no cover except for that sandbag on the right, obviously. But, uh, yeah, that worked out nicely. And now here comes the debate. Do I spend another turn trying to get her a bit closer and get greedy with it? Or do I bring up Zyg... I'm going to bring up Zyg... I'm going to bring up Godwin, I mean, to capture this game. Let's see if he had... He should have the movement range to get up there, at least. Yeah, easily got the movement range. So there's the camp capture. Uh, I'm going to get him by the sandbag on the right, so just in case that machine gun has uh, potential on me. Okay, there we go. I was going to say that was a bit close. It's still close. It's still close. Uh, so that machine gun does have eyes on us, but I do have a good setup there with the, with the shock troops watching the back. Uh, what do we got? We got a hooligan up here. Ooh. Saw that coming. Ooh, that's spicy. Oh yeah, there we go. I think it was going directly for the camp. So the other one's gonna make his Zerg rush here. Oh, he's gonna live on eight. And he's just gonna light up Godwin like that. Ooh. Finish him off there, Godwin. That was not nice of him. I don't think we would have survived that without the without that capture and the bonuses we got from capturing him. Alright, so uh bit of a priority issue here. Kai, I need oh, yeah. you to move up now and eliminate this enemy sniper. Because he's going to be a bit of a problem, a bit of a thorn in our side, if I do say so. Alright, it's a bit of a long shot, but can we do it? One shot, one kill, Kai. Here we go. Straight and true! Beautiful! Beautiful! Two 
East. Best girl. Target destroyed. 2018. All right, Riley. Now's your time to shine. We're going to get you up into position so you can eliminate that MG position. And I'm going to zerg forward with the um, with my machine gunners or my shock troopers, I mean, and uh, do the do the deed. Do the deed. Show me what you can do. I'm so glad these guys don't have the ranges they do in like Arma. Otherwise, I'd be dead before I even got across the bridge. Oh, cool! Single round elimination. I like that. One more for me. Excellent work, Riley. Doing the eleven Charlie name proud. All right, let's see. You know what? We're gonna take Don't Godwin. Down to me. Godwin, you're gonna move forward and just kind of take this uh, forward position. And that's game. Are we making any? Dun, dun, dun. So, they kicked it up in a bit more complexity there, threw an extra objective at us in the middle of what we were doing, right. we which through. was really, it's really fun, I, I really like that, this, uh, if, if there's one thing I learned, they like to do that, I feel like, a lot in this game, so, uh, we'll see how it goes in future episodes about that. Keep advancing, capture that cannon! But now we're about to see the dedication of the Imperial troops. Federation. Bastards! We won't let the blood, sweat, and tears of the Imperial people fall into your hands! <sighs> Glory to the Motherland! Everyone, get down! Alright, there we go. Look at that A rank. Perfection. Beautiful, beautiful. And on to the next one. You certainly impressed someone in that last battle. Oh, cool. So we got a patrol cap. Nice. Ugh. We're about to get into some of the meat and potatoes as well, so I'll uh, we'll, we'll show some of it off, and then we'll so show the, the rest of it off at the beginning of the next episode. Or what's left of it, anyway. It's a big-ass gun. So much for surrendering. Denying us this scrap metal cost them their lives. They chose death before dishonor. Everyone who goes to war knows they might die. But if I was in their shoes, I don't think I could pull the trigger. We're not fighting to die. We're fighting to live. Mm. These men died for their country, and I respect that. Still. Yeah. Weapons can be replaced. Life they kind of... They, they, I like this narrative. It's really... I don't agree with it. I'm I'm all about the death before dishonor kind of thing and all that jazz, but it's it really makes you think a little bit more about that kind of mindset that some people would have is I'd rather take my own life instead of being captured by the enemy, that kind of stuff in in times of conventional war. Obviously, I'm getting into a little bit more of a different kind of rant here, but but speaking of weapons, how about those new guns the reinforcements were carrying? <laughs> a complete change in tone. I love it. For being portable, it sure packed a wallop. Big things really do come in small packages. It's got state-of-the-art tech with the range of a tank. Never seen one of these beauties? And I thought you were supposed to be the cream of the crop. a mortar a magic wand that grants every soldier's wish awesome right you see in this isn't that uh 
Uh, I need to clip that, and I'm going to make a couple montages of eleven of us eleven Charlies in the cab utilizing the mortar, and the video is going to start with that clip. For the memes, you know. Say, who's in charge of the squad? Gotta say, I'm impressed at how quickly they were able to change their tactics on the fly. Uh, well... Hmm? Wait, Raz? What are you doing in the Edinburgh Army? We enlisted together to protect Galia. No way! Lena? Small world, huh? Oh, sorry. I'm going by Kai now. Wait, Kai? Uh, but that's your... Riley. Hmm, I don't really get it, but okay. I'll call you Kai. Anyway, it's so amazing to see you. What are the odds of seeing old friends in a foreign war zone? Beats me. How'd you end up in joint operations anyway? Since you asked so nicely, <clears throat> I'm Lieutenant Riley Miller. After majoring in Ragnite Engineering, the Army brought me on as an artillery advisor. I've been temporarily transferred from the field artillery team for this joint operation. As long as I'm here, I'll provide the fire support you need to take down the Empire. My knowledge is your power. Just what our squad needed. We appreciate the support, Riley. So, where's the commander? I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, about that. It's not just us two in this squad. Huh? You mean Kai's here after all, or...? Riley, I'm the commander of Squad E. Oh, you're pretty young for an officer. But I was impressed out there. My knowledge is your... <sighs> Claude... Wallace... Well then... Is that all you have to say? <sighs> I can't believe I took orders from this coward. Screw that! Um, well... <laughs> I agree, Miles. I agree. Uh... <sighs> <sighs> it's saucy, I'd say. Chapter 2. The Liberation of Rain. All right, so we're going to continue on here. This episode is going to be a little bit longer than most. I'm trying to keep them around 30 minutes, so typically you think the cutscenes and then, you know, one combat mission, etc. About 30, 45 minutes or so. I'm trying to keep it around there. This one's going to be a bit longer because we're going to introduce the HQ and the elements involved with that. For meritorious action and capturing Fort Crest, you've earned this medal. It's a good start. Listen up, everyone. I'd like to introduce a new member of Squad E. Connor Doherty. I'm writing a book. Uh, a war story. Nonfiction. It's good to meet you. Ryan Fort, mercenary. You pay, I shoot. Oh, interesting fella. Self-conscious, eh? And the preferences have changed. Okay. Learner's Permit. Okay. So we're going to get into the next episode here, or the next uh, chapter here, and we'll see what we got. Two months since the start of Operation Northern Cross. The, yet, the further oh. they cut into Imperial territory, the more tenuous the supply chain. And so the Federation Army established a series of massive outposts along the front line. 
among them. Lindbergh Base. Commanded by the 101st Division, this outpost Forward will prove itself a vital me. logistics hub in the battles to come. Is our new base? It's incredible! Apparently, these facilities can accommodate over 3,000 soldiers and 100 tanks. That's not a whole lot if you think about it. That's. No, that's not a division. That's. Maybe a battalion. If. No. A little bit more than a battalion, I'd say. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a regiment. Two battalions, regiment, something like that. On top of that, Obviously it they have enough food, fuel, and ammo to supply every squad on the front line. Impressive. More like a dream come true. If I didn't know better, I'd think we were still in Federation territory. I guess the brass can get stuff done, when they actually try. What's the deal, though? They got all these resources and we're still stuck with one busted-ass tank? Excuse me? Our squad takes excellent care of the Hoffman. I have to admit, this really puts the scope of our mission into perspective. Hell yeah. With this much heat, the imps are gonna feel the burn. You guys can hear my chair squeaking in the background. Sorry about that. No, we've barely seen the tip of the iceberg. Even all this might not be enough. Oh, you think? A way to rain on our parade, Commander. Hey, who's that? They got some weird get-ups. They look like naval officers. Oh, those are <laughs> navy uniforms. That's a surprise. What are naval troops doing this far inland? Well, I salute them for swimming all the way here. <laughs> Whoa! -ho -ho. Check out the ass on that one. I'd swab her deck. <laughs> Roz is, um, he's, he's, he's the real MVP, the real trooper of this, of this unit. Oh, hold up, Raz. I'm just gonna say hi. Break the ice, you know? He's hopeless. Poor Kai. I just hope he doesn't get into trouble. Don't hold your breath. Yeah. Anyway. We still have some time before the meeting. I'm gonna go take a look around. All right, so welcome to headquarters. We have a couple things at our disposal. We have the command room, we have the training field, we have the R&D facility, and then we have our option to go back to the book mode where we can continue the story. So first things first, we're gonna head into the command room. This is a lot like the first game. So this is the command center. I guess our deployment's going to change depending on the demands of the we'll mission. We'll obviously unlock more of this as we go, too. I'll need the right balance of combat specialties. I should go over the pros and cons of every one. First things first, I'll look over the squad as a whole. And don't worry, you don't have to deal with that conversation the entire time. This is all just first time stuff we have to go through here. So they're going to basically tell us everything about that. Uh, we also have the select squad set up to access the different units. Uh, optimize the squad, obviously, by managing their combat classes and the squaddies each soldier likes, like we talked about earlier when we were talking about our squad set up earlier. So we just unlocked a couple new guys. We have a new mortarman, Connor. I will gladly take another mortarman in the team. This. You could never have too many mortars. Uh, we also unlocked, what was his name, Ryan. Ryan's a shock trooper. He gets along well with Kegel. Who is Kegel again? Do I have him on my team? I don't think I have him yet. Let me take a look. Kegel's a Lancer. Ooh, that's going to be great. Okay, so I now have the opportunity to run a double Lancer shock trooper combo with Kegel, Jimmy, and Ryan. So I will definitely pick him Four up. Is my life. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Dun, 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 dun. I think I'm going to pick up... 
Aladdin and Lawrence then. I'll show them. Uh, just because shock troops and or not shock troops, lancers and uh, snipers kind of have the same bit of what you want to call it, uh, freaking movement speed or AP, I guess is the official term. Movement speed. Mo I prefer movement distance, whatever. Uh, so I want to keep these two together because basically what that'll mean is I'll be able to have my snipers support my lancer. So uh, obviously my lancer needs to get pretty close, but he can be my more long range shot kind of guy, which would be nice to have. And then of course we got our two mortarmen. Uh, definitely, definitely need this, especially for what I know happens in the in this chapter, uh, why I want a second mortarman for that. Uh, we got plenty of lancers now, and let's see. I think I'm gonna get rid of Jean. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of Jean because Ferrier is the only one that likes Jean, and uh, yeah, we're not gonna deal with that. <laughs> Introversion, poor visibility. Yeah. That's kind of brutal. I mean, Iron Mask is kind of cool, but eh. Uh, so yeah, we got three open slots still, so hopefully we can pick up some good guys in the future. All right. So here's our uh, potentials. I forgot what the B means and O means something else that I don't remember. But we'll unlock all those as we go, uh, and we'll kind of go over it together. Okay, cool. Uh, no tank parts. We did get a new decal. Uh, so this will give us defense plus, th plus 10, huh? Uh, I like the ranger emblem still, so I think I'm going to keep the ranger emblem on. And we'll hop out of the command room then. That should do it for now. Preparation's a vital part of any battle. So most of that stuff I'm going to try to do off screen, then I'll recap it. Uh, I'll recap it at the start of every episode, of course, if I do make any changes. That way, so we're all kind of on the same page. Next up, we got the training field. And are, I've been charged with Squad E's training. As ranking, As ranking lieutenant. lieutenant, I'll be giving strict instruction to each combat class. You, you're both first lieutenants, unless they reversed it, and now you now. Second lieutenant's the best, first lieutenant's the worst, and then you have third lieutenant, who knows, I don't care. The experience you each time a class makes a breakthrough, every squad member of that class will show improvement. So basically we have you have collective XP that you gather based off of the battles. Now oh, shut up. Uh, and uh, basically each class, the entire class will level up, not just an individual uh, soldier. So keep that in mind when you do this experience stuff. And it's going to tell you here, obviously. So our next level for the scouts, we'll, may, we'll learn a new order. And then our next level for our lancers, we gain a new battle potential. Um, I'm actually going to level up my shock troopers and grenadiers. You're not done All yet. All right. Yeah, we're going to level up these the shock troopers, grenadiers, and then scouts. You've Those will be our three up. that will uh, kind of get up. So I'm going to get all these guys up one level to start with, and then I'll see if I have enough to level up my shock troopers to level three. You're not done yet. Do you want? Ironically, um, in the first game, I never really used shock troopers all that much. I mostly just used scouts all the time, which You've was perfectly fine. I'm going to just talk over because I don't really care. Uh, what I do? I did shock troopers, grenadiers, now scouts. So we'll teach a new order here, and then we'll level up these shock troopers, Just and then the grenadiers it. again. Push That's going to be kind of the combo we'll go with. And then every now and then we'll level up the uh, snipers, followed by the lancers, and then the engineers. You've leveled up, so to speak. Good work. The engineers I'm not too worried about, because I want to... Uh, hmm. What did I learn? Evade boost? Cool. All right, cool. Uh, level up the shock troopers one more. Come now, is that the best you can do? I had to deal with Alexis Tipton yelling at us this entire time. So boom, shock troopers leveled up, and then grenadiers up, so will level up, and then lancers will level up next. Well, well. Cool. So we'll level up the grenadiers next, and then we'll level up the lancers. Come now. 
Wow. Is and then the I'll throw the rest of it do? into snipers. You've leveled up, so to speak. Cool, cool. So our Mortarmen learned a new potential there. So yeah, we'll go here, and then I'll go snipers next. Come now, is that the best you can do? So some good level up techniques that we got going here. Pretty good flow of it, uh, as You've far as priority's sake. Look at that, the Lancers have Awesome, and the last but not least, we got our snipers. Actually, that gives us enough to then do the engineers as well, so You're we'll level up the engineers yet. as well, why not? Typically, you what I like to do up, is so I'll just speak. save my Good experience. Work. If I have extra that I can't throw anywhere, I'll just save it. You can, if you want, throw it on something random. So, like, I could partially throw some on here and call it a day, but I'm not going to. Uh, I usually just save it until I have enough to level up in a class. And You're then not I use done it then. yet. Do you want to win or don't you? There we go. So everyone's at least level two You've with our up, crucial so units at level three. Good work. Awesome. That works. Hmm. Oh, yeah. When cop. All right, she's gonna blah 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 blah. Orders are the thing. Use your orders. So That's I never really me. use orders all that often. Basically, it's like a one-time perk you can use for your soldiers. That's about it, really. It's they're they're pretty useful from what I understand, but I'd rather take Whoa, the time to God. use that uh, CP on actually moving a unit. It's just kind of my thing. Perks of working in a Federation forward operating base, huh? If there's any. All right. So, R&D it does research and development basically. This is where you upgrade all your equipment. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Upgrade equipment here. Um, you branch out from the start here, which is nice. So I'm actually going to let's see. I got six thousand nine hundred thirty-three. What can I do? You know what? Let's go for the uniforms. Uh, uniforms are nice to have. We'll do that then. All done, Cla And these automatically equip too, which is really nice. And then the heavy armor for our shock troops. Wow. I'm and then last but not least, the blast suit. Whoa. Uh. Let's see. I might go into the Robinson M92 next. We'll see about it. It only does one more point of damage versus per versus people, so I'm not like meh. This is a pretty significant increase, though. You gain better range and uh, three points of damage. So yeah, we'll do that for the rifles. All done. It does branch out into a completely different set, which I'm really interested in because. This set branches out into yet another set, but this set is all on its own, so interesting. We haven't unlocked any of those yet, so we're fine. Uh, next, we're going to get into tank parts. All right. So if we go into treads and other, which we don't have anything for, here's where we have all the good shit. Uh, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for the AP shell upgrade. Whoa. And I'll go for the reinforced body upgrade. Cool, that works. All done. Cl so the attack support, you see where it says block size down below? Uh, these you kind of fit into your tank as you see fit in the change parts category. So you have a, what is that, it's a 4x4 four four box. Basically, uh, within that 4x4 four four box, you can place certain parts in there like we were discussing, like we saw first in the tank, in the attack support part, with that 1x1 one one block size. So that's one block of that space for the attack support stuff that we'd be able to put in this site upgrade for. Basically, it allows you to modify your tank without completely going insane with it. 
Uh, right, let's go issue equipment here. So we all got the uniform upgrades and everything else. We're good. Kind of exciting, isn't it? Once we're ready, let's come back and make something to strike fear into the. I have a feeling in this game you get to command more than one tank, which will be really interesting. So that's it for that. We're gonna head on back into book mode here and unlock the next set of uh, shenanigans here. Oh my gosh. Skirmishes. Cool. I'll discuss the skirmishes uh, real quick. Oh my god. And then they add more stuff into the HQ while we're gone. Okay. So, lots and lots of sound effects there. Uh, skirmishes are basically... Uh, this is your grind mode, quote-unquote. You flip it over here, and basically these are just uh, extra modes you can kind of play uh, to kind of better yourself. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to discuss the mess hall. We'll get into that and the personnel quarters in the next one. Uh, that'll be for a different episode. So, uh, thank you guys for watching today. Um, I'm probably going to do another episode before I go to sleep. It's freaking uh, 019 in the morning right now. Uh, I'm most definitely going to do one more episode because I am just in love with this game. And this next episode we beat, sorry, there's a fly in my face. This next episode we beat is the end of the demo. So we got that going for us as well. Uh, skirmishes, I might just do off screen just because they're skirmishes. They're all the same maps we've already seen with just different enemy types or different objectives. That's it. Uh, so I'll probably keep those off screen. I'll try to keep as much of the HQ off screen as possible. I'll throw on some interesting stuff here and there for first time viewing stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe for more content and always leave a comment. I try to read any old comments I possibly can. And I try to, subs I tr I try to reply to as many as I can as well. Uh, either way, Rook Panda checking out. I almost forgot my intro there. Or my outro. I'm just going to end this.